one up is uh, Roger Esparza, CEO and founder of Siemens Dynamics, a European startup mentioned before. Wow, impressive room. Uh, I'm thrilled to be opening the program and uh, congratulations to the organization. Uh, seeing so many people is just fantastic. And um, I'm just going to jump right into the, uh, into the topic. I want to talk to you about how from Semi Dynamics we're helping all the people trying to get, go into the AI market and how our, our technology is helping them. And I'm going to be talking about our all-in-one uh, RIS-5 compute engine. So um, many of you may have seen, uh, I'm going to go um, a picture like this. This is what I call an old style AR architecture. We've seen many, many SOCs in the market that look somewhat like that. There's a bunch of cores. Of course, everybody in the room wants those cores to be RIS-5, but we know there are other competitors and there are other cores driving the system. And a lot of people put next to that an NPU, a neural processing unit, which is a bunch of a large amount of max, little uh, yellow boxes, uh, multiply accumulate units, which goal is basically to multiply matrices. And then people uh, uh, understanding the workload, uh, AI workload, say, well, I, I got to run something else. So, well, I'm going to um, also add a GPU of some sorts to run what uh, in the language is called activation functions, right? And this architecture is actually quite popular, but it has many problems. First one of all, it's three software stacks. So if any of you is trying to think uh, or build a SOC like that, think carefully, because you'll end up with your hopefully RIS-5 cores, but an NPU from another vendor and a GPU from another vendor. So you'll end up having to mix three software stacks. Oh, sorry, too fast. Um, second is going to go. Um, you're going to your software team is going to have a lot of trouble doing DMA intensive program. You'll be doing DMA copies from yellow to blue, from blue to green, then from green to yellow, and your software team is going to hate you because they have to synchronize all these copies, and it's, it's a mess, right? And uh, copying those things, oh, actually, oh, I see. I'm seeing the two slides. OK. Um, so we call that DMA intensive programming. So. By doing DMA copies, you actually pay another price, which is high latency, because those copies unfortunately take time. And they take energy and power, because you are copying data from yellow to blue, from blue to green, and so on and so forth. So it's not great, right? Um, also on the block diagram, you see these black boxes where I put the words cache or SRAM. Doesn't matter which uh, you know religion you follow, whether you like caches or scratch pads or just local SRAM, you're going to end up with three replicated arrays of storage that is costing you PPA, right? So that's actually not good. And it's very difficult to scale these things up. Maybe you, your uh, NPU vendor that's providing you the IP can scale very well, but maybe your GPU doesn't scale that well, or maybe your cores are not as good as you thought, right? So scaling this thing is actually complicated, right? And I'll try to convince you later with a slide that this is actually architecture is not AI future-proof, and I'll, I'll, I'll see if I succeed in convincing you. Instead, what do we propose? We propose merging these three things into one, right? We propose that we have the core, right? Obviously, RIS-5, we wouldn't be here otherwise, right? And the core is really in control of everything. So the core, attached to the core, we have a vector unit, which has these big F blocks, which are F max, floating point, multiply, accumulate units. But also connected to the core, we've extended the RIS-5 asset. That's one of the great things that Kalista was talking about, about, you know, this is a greenfield. We can go ahead and add uh, new technology. We've added a bunch of... Um, uh, RIS-5 instructions to drive a tensor unit, which is composed uh, uh, of a bunch of uh, multiply accumulates unit, right? Why is this better? Well, first thing, it's a single software stack. It's RIS-5. It's just RIS-5 instructions. So your software team, if you choose this solution, is not going to have to now piece together three different architectures, three different software layers, right? Second thing, I, th I hope it's obvious from the picture, but I'll say it, DMA-free programming. You're not going to be copying data from yellow to blue and from blue to green. No, no, don't worry. It's all under the core. There's no copies. And therefore, if there are no copies, surprise, it's zero latency. Your data is inside the core. You're not moving data. No latency, zero clocks. And lower power. You're not. Uh, wasting energy moving data from one place to another. Now, 
Also, whether you like caches, whether you like scratch pads, I don't care, but that black box on top is going to be one, and the, your data is going to be in one place, not in three. You're not going to waste silicon area replicating copies of the same thing three times, right? Um, and it actually makes for really nice scaling, right? Once you have this block, making copies of those blocks gives you a very nice scaling, very balanced. So you need more AI compute, no problem. Put more of this, and you'll get a very balanced solution, right? And I'll try to convince you that it is AI future-proof. I have a slide coming up. Now, to be very technical, I wanted to have a block diagram. I like block diagrams, so you'll have to endure. There's the RISC-5 core on the, on the left. Um, connected to the RISC-5 core, we have the vector unit. We've talked about this in previous summits. Uh, this is our, our uh, the vector unit contains eight in this, I think it's 16 in this case, uh, floating point multiplier community unit. And the thing we announced last summit was that we also had the tensor unit directly connected with the vector unit. And the point of the diagram, uh, besides impressing you with the nice pictures, is that everything is connected under control of the core, right? That's really the point of the diagram. So, uh, and, you know, to give you a glimpse, and we talked about this, so you can go to our website and learn more about it. I wanted to show you how this is different from the classic uh, old style AI, right? You can write matrix multiply in exactly eight RIS-5 instructions, right? These, yes, it's complicated. There's lots of letters. I'm not expecting there's no exam as you come out. But um, it's really just RIS-5 instructions. There's nothing special. You go to a manual. It's just a program. You can debug it with your debugger. There's nothing strange about it, right? So uh, I'm not going to go into details. Don't worry, right? So I wanted to talk about AI when uh, what our AI customers come to us and say, hey, what, you know, how are you going to help me solve my AI problems? And we get three questions, right? What software stack, that's my time, right? OK, what software stack do I get with your IP? Can I run your models today? And can I run the future models? And the third question is really interesting, because these AI guys keep inventing things, right? So you start your AI, des uh, your SOC design today. It's going to take you three years to go to market. How are you protected against the future, right? So let's go, uh, sorry, I, um, can, I scale, how, can, I, can I scale your solution and, and your future models, right? So let's talk about the software stack real quick, because I'm running out of time. We chose to go with ONNX. ONNX is a um, standard started by Microsoft. They have this really nice runtime environment. And you can just take ONNX. You can take any training framework, any framework you like, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Keras, you name your favorite. They all export to ONNX. If it runs on ONNX, it runs on Semi-Dynamics AI solution. So we've, pr uh, we've written what's called an execution provider, which tailors the ONNX execution to our hardware. We've optimized it, and so you can run any model you want on our hardware, right? The next thing we get a question is, well, Red, you say that, but can you run LLMs, LLMs are, and transformers are the rage these days. Everybody wants to know, hey, can you run transformers and LLMs on your solution? And our answer is yes, right? And today I'll talk about Llama 2, uh, the FP16 version, 7 billion parameter that you can download from Hugging Face yourself, right? So in order to talk about it, we chose, of our tensor units, we chose the small one, the T1, the one top uh, tensor unit. We chose for our vector unit, we chose the V128, which is the 128 intake gigaops, and we put that together. And I wanted to show you a table that's lots of numbers, but I, I'll, I'll walk you through it. So, what happens when you try Llama on, on our solution, right? And what is this big table, right? What you can see, these are the operators that uh, make up Llama 2. Uh, you can see there, there's MADML, and then there's a bunch of activations, right? And we'll first, what well, the first thing we did is run this thing on our solution only on the RISC-5 core, and we call that 1x speedup, right? And uh, the first thing we did is analyze it, and well, probably half the room already knows this, but surprise, when you la run these large LLM models, what you get is um, what you get is 99% is MADML and 1% is activations, right? So the first thing that if you've done your computer architecture class, you'll remember Andal's law. What does Andal say? Says, well, optimize MADML. That's where the tensor unit comes in, right? So we run this thing uh, using, we took, uh, teach ONNX to only use the 
the T1 tensor unit, and what do you get? First, you get a tremendous speed up, right? Because you just applied a one terawatt uh, computer engine to the problem, so you get a speed of 170. Nothing surprising when you put that kind of power, right? And the nice second thing is that now MADMO is actually 20% of your execution time, but now activations are 80% of your uh, execution time. So you're somewhat blocked by that, and you're, um, you're, um, you know, you're, you're unbalanced, right? You can see the activations, the details there. Uh, so um, you can see that Concat and ScatterND are sort of dominating. Sigmoid is also important. Um, so what's your next step? You say, well, okay, I've, I've fixed my uh, matrix multiply problem. Now the thing I want to do now is actually um, apply the vector unit to address those activation functions. And that's the third column that's coming up. What happens when you do that? Well, two nice things happen. First, you get another almost 2.7, 2.8 speed up. So now your speed up has been enormous. Now you're running Lama 2 at a very uh, respectable speed. But actually, a little more technical detail that's actually better, you now have a balanced architecture. By putting everything together, the tensor unit, the vector unit, and the core driving everything, you now have you know, 55, 45 is not perfect, but I'm actually quite pleased because now you, you have, according to Andel's law, a very balanced solution that now you can think about scaling, right? Now you're going to say, well, but maybe that's not fast enough. Maybe I actually want more performance. You put together this one block. How do I scale further if I want more performance from, from semi-dynamics? And our answer to scale uh, the solution is to actually replicate this thing, right? So what we do is we take the block you see on the, on the bottom, right? And we just make multiple copies. How many? Well, that's. I'm going to ask the customers in the room. Uh, my answer is always whatever you want. You tell me the performance you want. We supply you with the IP, and you guys add as many copies as you need in your solution, right? And we see a number of uh, of uh, of um, of good things there. First, the you can share the cache about, uh, across all these elements and uh, optimize. As I was saying before, I said, hey, if you replicate the data, you're going to be wasting area and power. Here, you can actually share the cache, right? So when our customers come to us, we say, you know, pick, pick your our one of our tensor units, pick one of our vector units, and just replicate these engines as many as you need until you hit. And we work with our customers to define what's that performance and how much uh, performance they need and how many of these units they need. Uh, here I put eight. You know, some customers will need four. Some customers will need 32. Some customers go crazy and want tons and tons of these units uh, put together, right? Um, I always, when I show this picture, I always get this question. People uh, sometimes are lost, like, well, I'm lost. He's got all these copies. Where is the software running? And actually, many options, right? You, this are full RIS-5 cores. And the beauty of RIS-5 is actually those cores are fully capable of booting Linux. They actually have virtual memory. We actually have hypervisor. So you know these are very, very capable cores. They're not just tiny, tiny, tiny uh, little microcontrollers driving the thing. They're very capable. So you could run uh, Linux on these array of cores and run the RNX runtime there. But of course, other people say, well, I actually would like to have some main cores, which again, I'll say it again, we all hope these are going to be RIS-5 cores, but sometimes they're not, unfortunately. Uh, but we're working hard to make them. And you could also run Linux on top and have ONNX actually dispatched to these engines, right? So once again, the answer is whatever the customer wants. You can do a system like that. You can do a system with no main cores. In any case, it's going to be RIS-5. In any case, you're going to be running the ONNX accelerated solution on our, on our thing. Another theme that I want to touch on is uh, future-proofing your solution, right? So those of you in the room that are thinking of building an SOC, it's a, a lot of money you're going to invest. And when you're going to invest that money, you have to buy IP. And one of the concerns of our customers is, well, how do I know that you, this IP I'm buying from Semidynamics is going to be useful in the market when I hit the market? And that's actually a very difficult question. And to convince you, you know, I have a very simple argument, but it's very powerful, right? When you think about this all-in-one element, fundamentally, it's just instructions. So it's just a RISC V program. This very complicated hardware that we put so much effort and love to build is driven by a RISC V core. And um, going a little bit pedantic, the RISC V 
uh, core is a Turing complete machine, right? So it can run any program you guys in the room and the people not in the room can invent. So no matter what they invent, if it has if then else and it has recursion, that's that's about it. That's a program. Any program you can express in PyTorch, any program you can express in TensorFlow or in ONNX, if you can express it in ONNX, we will be able to run it. And that's why we say uh, that you know we are future-proof. If you buy the other architecture style, you don't know that fixed function whether it's going to be uh, appropriate or not for things that none of us in the room know um, that are coming, right? We don't know what's going to be invented by the AI guys in a year or in two years, right? So with a uh, solution like this, you, your investment is actually, um, is actually safe. Uh, what else did I have? Actually, that's my last slide. I'm three minutes ahead of time. I was r reading the time wrong, but that's perfect. Um, so, uh, you know, my last slide just summarizes what we said, right? With our solution, you get a very solid software ecosystem running on, um, on our solution, which is based on ONNX. It's fully open source, as open source as RIS-5, so no worries that you'll be locked in into a semi-dynamic solution. Don't worry. You get ONNX. You can use ONNX. Uh, number point two, can I run today's AI models with current IP? Yes, you can run uh, Llama 2. This is the first time we uh, share with the world that, yeah, of course, our solution can run an LLM like Llama 2. We have it running uh, in the lab. You can come to the booth and ask all, all the questions you want about how we run Llama 2. So that actually works fantastically well. And um, can I run future AI models and the risk of boring you and repeating myself? Uh, yes, because this is a solution with the core driving everything, the vector unit, which is a, a bunch of RIS-5 uh, vector extensions, and the tensor instructions, again, extensions enabled by the openness of RIS-5, you will be able to run today's models and future models no matter what people um, invent. So without that, um, I'm happy to host you at our booth, which is coming out of the of the of the of the main hall uh, come visit us ask any questions you had ask any details you want thank you very much and let's build the ai future together thank you <laughs>